When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. In the last video, I mentioned there was actually some hydroxide and some hydrogen ion concentration in pure water itself. And we mentioned this equation. So this was two water molecules bumping into each other. And those two water molecules producing hyd a hydronium ion. And one of those hydrogens is transferred to the other side. And one hydroxyl ion, because that one that's transferred the extra hydrogen, now has one less hydrogen and therefore becomes a hydroxyl ion. We said that most of the water still stays as these intact molecules, but some of them will be in the form of hydroxide and hydronium ions. And this is obviously also important. This means that it's a reversible reaction. So that means Le Chatelier's principle applies to this equation. We also mentioned the water constant, which was Kw. And we said the water constant was a, a way that we can figure out the concentration of hydroxide ions and of hydronium ions in any solution. And for water, so the constant for water is we have 0, sorry, 10 to the power of minus 7 of hydronium and 10 to the power of minus 7 of hydroxide ions in our normal water. And if we times both those together, that will be minus 14. Now what would happen if, for example, I were to pour in a acid. So I pour it in an acid, let's say hydrochloric acid, pour that into the water. And obviously hydrochloric acid dissociates to form hydronium or hydrogen ions and also chlorine ions. Now the chlorine ions aren't that important for this. These are just side things. The main part is this. If we pour in, so if we have a beaker of water, which at the moment has a pH of 7 is neutral, if we pour in our hydrochloric acid, what that means is we increase the hydrogen ions because they dissociate into hydrogen ions. And what that means is the actual equation here, this reversible equation, will have an increase in hydronium ions. Remember the Chatelier's principle, what happens if we have the concentration increasing on one side? There'll be a disturbance of the equilibrium, which means in this case, the actual reaction will go to the left side to use up those added hydronium ions. And that means that we have an in decrease in hydroxyl ions. So overall, if we, if we were to put acid into water, that means the pH will go up, the hydrogen concentration will go up, because we increased our hydrogen concentration, and our hydroxyl ions will go down, because the actual equilibrium will shift to left. So we'll try to use up those hydrogen ions, as many of as it can, by going in the reverse reaction to form water again. Some will be used up, and when it does that, it uses those hydroxyl ions, they'll be gone. But some will stay, which is why the overall concentration of hydrogen ions will actually increase. And that makes the water more acidic. But also important is the hydroxide ion concentration will go down. That's important. But overall, this so if in this case we've got 10 to the power of minus 7 times 10 to the power of minus 7 is 10 to the power of minus 14. If we were to increase the hydrogen concentration, so if let's say if we put that to 10 to the power of minus 4, which remember minus 4 means it's actually more than minus 7. So if that's increased, to make sure that it stays at 10 to the power of minus 14, that means this must have decreased, right? So it stays at minus 14, and the way we can do that is by having 10 to the power of minus 4 times 10 to the power of minus 10. Those together will give you 10 to the power of minus 14. And that's just, again, that's all of this what I just mentioned. If we increase our hydrogen concentration, that means it's going to be shift to left-hand side, which will be equal to decrease in the hydroxide concentration. So if we increase this, then this will decrease to keep the water constant the same. And that was just all the idea of equilibrium and such. But So you should know that there's this water constant, and overall you should remember this number, 10 to the power of minus 14, that's the water constant. And the concentration of hydrogen ions and, and hydroxide ions, it's just going to make sure that it stays at this 10 to the power of minus 14. We're going to go for a couple of examples. But first what I want to do, so the actual dot point itself says, describe 
the use of the pH scale in comparing acids and bases. Now this is our pH scale we mentioned in the last one. We said 7 was neutral. We mentioned 0 to 6 is acidic and 8 to 14 is basic. But how can we link that back to our pH scale? Remember we said pH was the constant, so the minus log of the concentration of hydrogen ions. So that means the more hydrogen ions we have, the lower our pH, and the less we have, the higher our pH. So our acids would have a high concentration of hydrogen ions compared to our bases. Now this says we have a pH of zero. How could we figure out what our concentration of hydrogen ions is if we have given our pH? In this case, we have, we're trying to find our pH, but we have the concentrations of hydrogen given. But what if that were in the case? Well, we could rearrange that formula, and it would look something like this. Hydrogen ions, so we, this is what we want this time. We want to figure out our hydrogen ions. We have our pH given, so here it says pH of zero. And that's actually, all you have to do is do 10, to the power of minus our pH. So in this case, if we want to figure out how much hydrogen ion concentration there is in this, we would do 10 to the power of minus 0, which gives us 1 as our answer. So that means for 1, we have 1 mole, 1 mole per liter of hydrogen concentration in our actual solution. And remember, we also said that we have every time we increase we go from 0 to 1, or from 1 to 2, or from 2 to 3, that's a tenfold change. So a tenfold change in hydrogen concentration. So if this concentration here is 1 liter, 1 mole per liter, then going from 0 to 1 would mean we've gone from 1 to 0 0.1, because that's a tenfold difference. And remember also, because if we go this way, that means our actual hydrogen concentration will go down, because the more hydrogen concentration we have, the higher, so the more we have, the lower our pH. So one zero will be the most concentration, and from there on we just decrease in the concentration. But it's always going to be tenfold decrease. So one zero will have one mole per liter, one is 0 0.1, two would then be, again, a tenfold difference from 0 0.1, so 0 0.01 for two, 0 0.001 for three, and then for 4, it's 0 0.0001, but I think you get the drift. And for 5, it's 0 0.00001. It's always a tenfold decrease. 6 would be 0 0.00001. For 7 would be 0 0.00001, etc., etc. Now, the, and then for 14, we actually have a concentration of hydrogen ions of 0 0.00001. I have to have 13 zeros here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13 zeros, and a 1. And this would be our pH of 14. So what you can see here is that if we have a pH of 14, that means we almost have absolutely no hydrogen concentration, a very little hydrogen concentration. And remember this equation, the water constant. Now, if we have... We'll just quickly put all these numbers in and we can figure out how much hydroxyl ions we have. So we've got Kw is 14. 10 to the power of minus 14 is our Kw. 10 to the power of minus 14 is our Kw. We just figured out what our actual um, uh, hydrogen ion concentration, or so hydronium ion concentration is for, for pH of 14. So that would be 10 to the power of minus 14 as well. That's our pH of 14, has a concentration of hyd hydronium or hydrogen ions of 10 to the power of minus 14. And now we're trying to figure out this. We're trying to figure out the concentration of hydroxyl ions. Well, what we can do is we can just put that here to the other side, bring it over to the other side. So that will give us a 10 to the power of minus 14 divided by 10 to the power of minus 14. And 10 to the power of minus 14 divided by 10 to the power of minus 14 is 1. So what that means is, in this case, hydroxide solu ion solution. So we have one mole per liter of hydroxide ions in that solution. So for a pH of 1, we have very little hydroxide. Uh, we have very, so pH of 14, we have very little hydrogen. Very little hydrogen concentration. So again, that was this number here, the 
tiny number here for hydrogen concentration, but we have a high number for hydroxide in solution. So one mole per liter for that. Now if we do one more calculation, which is a reverse, let's say we do want to figure out how much our hydroxide solution or our hydroxide concentration would be for pH of zero. We can use that same constant, okay, Kw equals the concentration of hydronium times concentration of hydroxide. And we have the concentration of, of hydronium here, which is one mole per liter. So 10 to the power of minus 14 equals 1 for our concentration of hydronium or hydrogen, which is 1 mole per liter, times our concentration of hydroxide. That's what we want to figure out. So we can bring this over to the other side by dividing both sides by 1. So that would then be, so this will be gone, it will be at the other side. 10 to the power of minus 14 divided by 1 equals the concentration of hydroxide ions for pH of the solution of, of what, 0. And that would, if we do that in the calculator, we figure out that our concentration of hydroxide ions is 10 to the power of minus 14. So what that means is if we are at a pH of 0, our hydrogen concentration is very large. Right? So one more per liter for our hydrogen concentration, but our hydroxide solution or our hydroxide concentration is very little. So it's, a, it's 0, 0.0 with 13 zeros and a 1. So our hydroxide is very little and our hydrogen is very high. So that's the whole idea of this. Describe the use of pH scale in comparing the acid and bases. So for anything which is here, it's going to have a relatively high concentration of hydrogen ions and a relatively low concentration of hydroxide ions. And a zero will have the highest concentration of hydrogen ion and the lowest concentration of hydroxide ions. Whereas on the other side, it will be the reverse. We'll have a very low concentration of hydrogen ions and a very high concentration of hydroxide ions. And again, an eight would have less hydroxide and more hydrogen concentration compared to 14. 14 would be the point where we have the highest concentration of hydroxide and the lowest concentration of hydrogen when we have a 0 to 14 kind of scale. Right, so bases are anything which have a high hydroxide solution and acids are anything that have a high hydrogen concentration solution. But I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.